I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Gabe Frank, CEO and co-founder of Arcade. Gabe, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks, Ashton. You're welcome. Let's dive right into the world of NFTs. There's so much that can be done with NFTs that a lot of people don't realize yet and there aren't really the platforms to capitalize in different ways on your NFTs uh, for the mainstream yet. But I know Arcade is working on some great things and I would love to kick off our conversation by hearing a little bit about Arcade and Pawn Protocol and then we can dive into the details. For sure. Um, so at Arcade, we're building uh, NFT financialization infrastructure. Um, and so about a year and a half ago, um, as NFT market cap started to grow into the billions, we figured that credit markets would also form on this sort of new asset class. Um, and so we're tackling the problems of a few things in the NFT space. Uh, one is enabling price discovery, and another is secondary liquidity on NFTs. Um, so Arcade is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, uh, decentralized, um, using smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, and uh, bars can take out loans against their NFTs, backed by their NFTs, and uh, lenders can uh, can participate in a new source of DeFi yield by lending against these assets. Um, Arcade is also a uh, heavily data science um, uh, oriented. So we have a data science team that works on models to actually value the assets and appraise the assets um, and help counterparties kind of come to terms on, on these loans. Mm -hmm. Great and great background and yeah, Definitely two big problems in NFTs right now. Um, and you mentioned their price discovery and, and secondary liquidity. Of course, you know, I've uh, even myself, I was looking at some NFTs and some of my friends were warning me, oh, make sure, you know, about the liquidity. Like, are you going to be able to sell this? Uh, are you going to be able to sell it at the top? You know, even smaller chance. Uh, but let's just start by diving into that a little bit more. Uh, with the price discovery, you mentioned there you have experts working on it. Can you talk about that problem of price discovery and NFTs, where it's at, and, and more specific on the solutions from Arcade? Yeah, sure. So NFTs are, are pretty much um, illiquid assets. Uh, some collections have you know secondary uh, transactions like punks and apes, um, and quite a quite a quite a bit of volume. Um, also, you know, high market cap artists like Pack and People and and Fuocious that are kind of highly in demand and, and, and even go through Christie's auction house and Sotheby's auction house, these mainstream kind of large, large, uh, um, businesses. And so, um, our, our kind of, uh, target market is sort of the, the high value, high net worth collector that has, um, you know, 10, 20, sometimes a hundred billion in, in assets locked up in NFTs. And um, very similar to the traditional art market, how uh, collectors of Picasso's, Monet's that are valued 100, 200 million, uh, collectors take out loans on those assets um, for capital efficiency to use, you know, as uh, investment also in their businesses to take out uh, and, and put in their, um, you know, their entrepreneurs, they put, put, them, put the funds back in, in their businesses. So we figured the same sort of model would form in NFTs and, um, and a lot of the loans that, that have gone through the platform have been sort of that long, those long tail assets, high, high value um, NFTs. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And yeah, good to always reiterate you know, to people that are new to the space about liquidity and uh, you know, how easy it is to sell. You know, it's easy to buy uh, when it's sitting there, but you know, actually turning a profit on it, if that's the goal, or holding on to it, you have to know how easy it is to sell. And there are a lot of marketplaces that are popping up. Um, but I know that Arcade's underlying technology is a part of this pawn protocol. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit and what are the advantages in having that in Arcade? Yeah, sure. So pawn protocol uh, is an in-house built um, uh, smart contract that basically enables escrow um, and loan settlement of, of NFTs. Um, so the contracts were built by very experienced uh, blockchain and Solidity developers. Um, a lot of these guys I worked with in the past in my former companies, um, and uh, basically we got together and we wrote a uh, spec doc of how the protocol uh, would work and how the contracts would govern the life cycle of the loan. Um, 
my background is in pawn shops. So before I got professionally in the space in crypto, I uh, was part of a family business in Texas um, that my dad managed a, a chain of storefront pawn shops. Um, and so when we first kind of wrote the contracts, it was a lot similar to the pawn model where the pawn shop takes custody of an asset and uh, gives the bar, you know, uh, liquidity. And so that that was the impetus for the name to be the Palm Protocol. Very cool, and uh, I, I really like that backstory and how it now ties into blockchain and digital and, and expanding it to a global marketplace. Very cool, Gabe. And how long now have you been working on Arcade and Palm Protocol, and and where is it at today? Yeah, we we've been working on it for about a year and a half now. Um, so when we started. Uh, working on on the protocol, the the market caps of NFTs were a lot um, a lot lower. So, since we started a year and a half ago, the market's grown 200x. Um, and uh, we raised a seed round in April last year, um, when it was just my co-founder and I and a few guys we were working with, and uh, we raised 2.7 million. Um, and from there, we we shipped the smart contract about four months later, um, and have been in a private release uh, since that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting ready to to launch in a public um, uh, to the public later this month. Mm -hmm. But so far in this private release, just working with a few camera parties on the lending side and and the collectors on the borrow side, we've done about five million of loan volume um, with long tail assets like the punks, apes, and and some of the one on one artists. Um, but uh, yeah, so we've seen um, collectors get comfortable with this with the protocol. Um, it's audited um, and sort of battle tested now with high value assets uh, being escrowed. Um, and uh, we've grown the team to about thirteen full time data scientists, engineers, um, and we just wrapped up an A round. So we raised fifteen million um, with uh, some really good investors that that um, you know uh, we think will add a lot of value. Mm -hmm. Great to hear and congratulations on that and <clears throat> keeping up with the growth of the industry because as you said, 200x in a year is incredible. Um, and, and now with the launch moving to the next stage of the platform, I'm curious, you know, we talked about, you mentioned high net worth individuals being able to get loans for their, uh, for their NFTs and a lot of the marketplaces that we're seeing pop up are, you know, you know, OpenSea obviously is dominating with the volume and the amount of revenue that they're generating and people are trying to make more decentralized versions of that that are more owned and, and accessible by everybody as well. Is the arcade marketplace specifically designed for these high net worth individuals and not really for, you know, everyday NFT people or does the marketplace sort of include a multiple variety of customers? Yeah, today, you know, we operate an OTC desk and it's really a white glove service to help these high net worth sort of DeFi power users um, that are used to using smart contracts and comfortable with it. So it is pretty niche today. Um, the you know, most of the value to NFTs is tied up in long tail assets. Um, so that's kind of our, our target market and, and, uh, and niche there. But as we go public, um, we think we'll start to see smaller, smaller loans um, on a wide variety of assets, um, not just the punks and the apes and kind of the, the OG um, blue chip collections. Mm -hmm. But today, it's, it's, it's really the, the high net worth collectors. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, and there's, there's definitely a need for that. Um, and now... With the platform, I'm curious as well, uh, is there a cryptocurrency that's integrated into the platform? And, and if so, how does that work and, and does it create a sustainable environment? Yeah, today we don't have a token. Um, whether we're going to have one in the future is sort of yet to be seen, but mm -hmm. we are building Web3 um, and we know how uh, the importance of community and uh, community owned governance of, of these protocols. Um, so it's not out of the question, definitely. Um, so today it's just pure utility for both counterparties, you know, needing or wanting loans for capital efficiency or, or to, to, to arb, arb the rates in DeFi. So get a loan on your NFT um, for a certain rate and then stick it back into these yielding protocols uh, where you can earn um, basically more money. Definitely. <clears throat> and with the pawn protocol and you mentioned the white glove service, have an OTC desk to work directly with these investors. Is the protocol, you know, when I hear working directly, it sort of, 
I think about centralization versus decentralization, and I'm curious if you have a thesis on the pro underlying protocol and whether it needs to be a certain amount of decentralized or just controlled by the contracts and have the founding team and the executives not be able to change or move the protocol. What's your thesis on that? Yeah, I mean, we're focused on, on decentralization, of course. Um, all the, the, the protocol is self-service. So somebody, you know, they don't have to go through our OTC desk. They can just go to the marketplace and um, hope that the loan gets filled. Um, now, some of our roadmap items are moving more towards um, smart contract governance, um, which uh, would require, uh, require our own token. Um, and you know getting into some of the different loan products um uh right now the, the marketplace is peer-to-peer -peer, but we are working on peer-to-pool models that would be similar more to like an Aave compound experience um and that's where we can get into more of um governance style where the community is either setting ltvs loan to value ratios um rates on certain collections so today, you know, it is sort of meat space and decentralization. Um, um, and I think that business will always um, be there. So a lot of the guys on our team have a TradFi background, trading background, come from the, the crypto custody space as well. So um, there's always going to be a need for that white glove service. But uh, we are extremely focused on decentralization, open source, um, and moving more towards you know community governance. Mm, that's great to know. And I'm curious with the loans themselves in the protocol. Perhaps it depends on the liquidity or the type of NFT. But with a lot of these, say that they're not that liquid. What is the collateralization like for putting up an NFT? Um, you know, do you get eighty percent, or are you getting one hundred twenty percent? Yeah, it depends on what collection the, the NFTs are part of. So, for example, punks. Um, usually, you can get uh, higher LTV on punks because they're a little bit more liquid and uh, they're they're highly in demand. So, lenders are comfortable with that risk. So, LTVs will go up. We'll see 50, sometimes up to 70% of uh, floor price or of the valuation that we put on, on the assets. Um, other NFTs like 101 um, art pieces are, um, of course, more liquid. So the LTVs will be much lower on those, you know, 20, 30 percent. And um, and depending on the collection, also the, the rates will vary. And, and that depends on what the LTV also is. So um, a lot of variables. And uh, sure. um, yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you for letting me know about that. And. You know, you talked a little bit about you know where the next stage is uh, for the marketplace and the platform, and I'd love to know you know if you have any other plans for 2022 and where you see Arcade by the end of this year. Yeah, sure. So we're going to build out different loan products all on chain. So building an installment type product that will allow for longer duration loans um, where users can pay back interest only or principal plus interest. Um, and just giving lenders and counterparties more flexibility in what they can do with the protocol. Now, um, our VP of protocol, Kevin Kennis, um, he just developed um, what's called a flash loan uh, rollover. And so basically that allows borrowers in these term loans because the, the loans today in the marketplace are term loans, which just means like uh, usually it's a three month term where the borrower has to lump, uh, has to pay back in lump sum at the end, principal plus interest. So this flash loan rollover is pretty innovative because it allows a borrower to take uh, to take out a loan. Maybe they're yield farming and a different protocol, and they can actually pay off a loan in the same block using an Aave flash loan and just service the debt and pay the interest while keeping their funds uh, still working. Um, so uh, we're we're baking that into the protocol in the UI. Um, mm -hmm. The other things on the roadmap are our peer-to-pool uh, model, so the more Aave compound experience where it works sort of like a, a revolving line of credit. Users can take liquidity um, up to the certain value of, of, of the assets, what the pool um, basically sets, and that's going to allow much more flexibility. Uh, we'll bake in also um, default mechanisms that liquidate the asset or that the pool wants to stick it in there on their balance sheets. 
Um, other than that, you know, we have a big, um, we're, we're ingesting a lot of data. So we look at all event log data um, from these secondary marketplaces and, and the blockchain to come up with appraisals and valuations. So a lot of that data can be used in house for po possibly principal lending on our side and also, um, you know, either resold or, or given um, as an Oracle on chain to other projects that are also getting into NFT trading or NFT lending. Um, going further, uh, you know, we are, since we, we basically uh, allow users to see all their NFTs in their wallet on, on the UI, similar to OpenSea, which OpenSea is really the de facto gallery for a lot of these users because they can just log on and see all their assets and, and that's what people like. So we're going to have the same thing. It's going to be a place for users to look at all their assets and, um, you know, could start working on buy sell marketplaces different auctions uh different auction mechanisms and um and yeah amazing all of it sounds great i'm really excited for the flash loan and the automation overall just making it easier and bringing more liquidity so thank you so much for putting this all together gabe for the viewers that are looking to learn more about arcade follow along and join in the communities what is the best way for them to get involved yeah, we have a pretty active Discord, um, an ar arcade Discord. Uh, we're also on Twitter, uh, arcade.xyz. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm on Twitter also, Stanley Krupp. And um, most of the team is on Twitter as well. We have a Telegram chat as well. So different channels. Um, it's pretty easy for somebody to get, to, to get in contact with the team or with myself. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gabe. I will leave your Twitter, the Discord, uh, everything in the description box below as well. All the best with Arcade throughout this year, and let's follow up in the near future. Awesome. Thanks, Ashen.